All right, shalom to the elect. I want to start by giving all the praises, honor, and glory to whom it rightfully belongs, which is Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechakwadash. All right, and what I said was all the praises, honor, and glory belongs to Yahweh, who is the Heavenly Father in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. All right, in the name of the Holy Spirit, and Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are not so called white men, they are so called black men. That belongs to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, never well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. And this is just going through, you know, Ezekiel the 39th chapter. You know, I got like 30 minutes. I can spare real quick. So I'm just trying to see how, so, you know, we'll see how far I can, you know, how far it gets, okay? All right. So it's Ezekiel chapter 39, starting in verse 1. Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog. Now, Gog, all right, are the Russians. You look at, where um you look at you look at an ancient map where Gog used to dwell, that's where Russia is, okay? And say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief priest of Meshach and Tubal. It's a lot here, it's a little thirsty, right? Verse two, and I will turn thee back. Alright, it says and then and it says, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and I will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So what the Lord is going to do, he's going to bring Russia down, you know, into uh, the land of Israel for this third world war. All right. However, you know, thinking about it, right, divide Russia's army into six parts. The Lord is going to have it to where Russia is going to leave um, one part, you know, pretty much a remnant of its army, a small amount of its, you know, pretty much a, yeah, a small amount of its army back at Russia to protect Russia. But majority of Russia's army is going to go into World War Three. All right. They're going to go down into uh, the land of Israel. All right. Verse three says, and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. All right. Verse four says, thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands and the people that is with thee. All right. <clears throat> and this is um, talking about Russia's army. Okay. You know, so it's not about bands and the people that it's with you because Russia isn't going to come in. The, and Russia's going to be allied going down there r real quick. Ezekiel 38 and verses 4 through 6. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth. And all thine army, speaking of Russia, horses and horsemen, all of all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. Even the great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. And it says Persia, which Persia, all right, is the original name of um, Iran, all right? Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. All of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his bands. So these different nations, Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, all right? It says with them. With who? With the Russians. Verse 6, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togarma of the North Quarters, and all his bands and many people with thee. Yeah, so this is, um, you know, you look at a map. You know, this is around, you know, the area of Turkey, around there. So those nations along with, you know, so those nations are going to be allied with Russia. Okay. And they're going to come down. And it says the north quarters because north of the land of Israel is where Russia, you know, it dwells at. Okay. So back in Ezekiel 39 and 4. Okay. And it said, for again, it says, thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands and the people that is with thee. I will give thee, and, but you see. The next part it says this, I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. So even though Russia, because you hear a lot about Russia on the news, okay? Even though Russia is going to be in this uh, next world war, the Lord is not with Russia, okay? The Lord is going to, uh, you know, destroy a lot of Russia's army, okay? And this is a cut to anyone saying that Russia is, you know, going to be next in power, Okay, because Russia is not going to be next in power. How is it that? How is it that um, you're going to go down to the uh, you're going to go down into the Middle East, all right? But you know, a lot of its army going to be destroyed there. Okay, remember, Russia is only going to leave a remnant of its army at home. That ain't enough to protect the whole nation. Okay, for you know, for them to rise back in power. That's that's not that's not good enough. Majority of the army is wiped out. You need an army to protect the nation. You see, and if when a lot of your protection is gone, that leaves you open season. Okay, so Russia's not going to be next up. They're going to go down there with their armies and with their allies and die. Okay, and it's, and it's said, you know, there's going to be a lot of dead bodies, man. 
And then it says, I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort. You see? Unto the beasts of the field to be devoured. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Verse 6, And I will send a fire on, Magog, on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And this fire, it's talking about this, Revelation chapter 20, starting in verse 8 through 9. It says, and shall go out to the sea the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. All right, Gog and Magog, Russia, Russia. The number of whom is that is the stand of the sea. And it says, the stand of the sea is a lot, right? So it's innumerable. It's a big amount. So what you're talking about, that Russia, you know, it's going to be a big army. Okay, verse 9. And they, they, Gog and Magog, went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. And so you're talking about the literal saints. All right. When you look at that word camp, it goes into the land. It's talking about the land of Israel. So they're going to go down to the land of Israel once again. And but in the beloved city, which is Jerusalem. All right. But however, fire came down from the most high out of heaven and devoured them. Right. It's going to nuclear, that nuclear fire. OK. I believe I was watching the brother require Mark going to this. And he was saying how, um, you know, as well as uh, a fire from the chariot. All right. Or chariots. But Ezekiel 39 and 6 again, and I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am Yahweh, but Hashem Yahweh Shai. Verse 7, so will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, but Hashem Yahweh Shai, the Holy One in Israel. You see, so once the Lord does this, his name is going to be glorified and respected and all of that once again. Verse 8, behold, it is come and it is done, saith the Lord Yahweh. This is the day wherever I have spoken. Yeah. All right. Yeah, man. This this day. This day that the Lord going to uh, bring this destruction right here. Okay. This is, this is, this, the Lord spoke about it. Okay. You know, so the Lord is going to cause World War Three to happen. You know, and they're going to come down, you know, into the Valley of Jehoshaphat. You know, this is... Um, Joel 3 verse 9 Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles Prepare war Wake up the mighty men Let all the men of war draw near Let them come up See they, they, and The Gentiles talking about the heathens So the heathens they're preparing for war Verse 10 Be your plowshares and the swords And your pruning hooks and the spears You know what does that mean A plowshare and a pruning hook Those are ag That's agricultural uh, instruments So Pretty much, you know, an agricultural instrument, you know, it's used for farming and all of that, but it says beat it in the swords, swords and spears, swords and spears. That's those are war instruments. So what is being said is pretty much, you know, the nations and the money that they would normally spend on agriculture. All right. They're spending um on, you know, the, the money that they that they would spend on agriculture, they're spending on uh, uh military weapons that, you know, now they have nuclear missiles. And it says, let the weak say, I am strong. Yeah, now the weak or or significant or insignificant, the, 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 the ins more insignificant nations now have nuclear weapons. You see? Verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. They're the cause thy mighty ones, which is the angels, to come down, O Yahweh. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, man. And Jehoshaphat in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shapat. Okay. Yahweh's name of the Heavenly Father and Shapat means to judge. All right. And so the valley of Yahweh's judgment, man. That's, your, that's what Jehoshaphat means, Yahweh's judgment. Why? For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. All right. Verse 13 Put ye in a sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fat overflow, for their wickedness is great. Verse 14, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. And the multitudes is the world armies. For the day of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is near in the valley of decision. You see? So, this is going to happen, you know, but Ezekiel 39 goes in a little bit what's going to happen after World War III. You know, after that destruction comes down there. Because they're going to have, hey man, World War III is going to be, it's going to be a huge war, man. All right? Ezekiel 39 and 9, right? Now, <laughs> and this shows you, when this cuts Christianity, it cuts all these false doctrines, man. 
Look, Ezekiel 39 and 9. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth. And now it says cities of Israel, but it's talking about the Israelites. Okay, because what? That land, Israel is going to get nuked. We read in Revelation 20, 20 uh, and 9. You know? How, um, you know, fire come down from the Lord. It's going to nuke. That's, that's that nuclear fire. Okay? You know? It says, and they that, so the, the cities, it's going to get nuked. So, what's it talking about? The Israelites. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons. Both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows and the hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. Now, what is this talking about? So, you know, what it's saying is, now it's talking about how the elect are going to come down out of the chariot, because the elect are going to be in the chariot, man. Okay, the elect, the, the salvation, everything going to take place. The elect is going to be in the chariot, all right? You know, but they're going to come down, and, and guess what? This this fits perfectly, because the elect are going to be in the chariot, and their bodies are going to be changed. Okay, and you know when they when they let come down the chair, Lord willing, you know, it was like minded brothers here at GMS, you know, and like minded brothers as GMS sincere brothers are a part of the are, are a part of the elect. Okay, you know, so let's talk about the elect gonna come down out of the chariot. Okay, and they're gonna have new incorruptible bodies. All right. And they're gonna have spiritual power, okay? And they're gonna and it says bucklers, bows, arrows, hand staves, spears. Those are weapons, okay? It just means weapons, man. All right. So the elect are gonna come down out of the chariot and go around the world and burn up all the military weapons, the nuclear missiles. And we're gonna have spiritual power. Somebody may think, well, a nuclear missile, how are you gonna blow that up? Ain't that gonna destroy everything? Well, with spiritual powers, we could contain that, you know? I'm saying well, we're gonna burn the tanks. The fighter jets, the guns, all of that. We're going to burn it up with spiritual powers. And I say we, Lord willing, I'm part of the elect. Okay? It says, they shall burn them with fire seven years. Meaning, just for a, you know, for a, you know, a complete amount of time that we're going to burn it for. Verse 10. So that they shall not slack it. So that they shall take no wood out of the field. Neither cut down any any out of the forests. For they shall burn weapons with fire. See, so we ain't going to need... Uh, so not so saying we're not going to have you know we're not going to need wood or something to burn this all right somebody think well if you ain't going to need wood how are you going to burn the weapons spiritual power you see we're going to need to take down wood out the forest or burn wood man or we're going to use spiritual power we're going to be changed you know the elect going to be changed by this time man all right but look check this next part out so the elect going to do that and then it says and they shall spoil those that spoiled them and rob those that robbed them all right, and who spoiled us and robbed us? The heathen. So this is saying that the elect, they also gonna, they all, which the, the pretty much after this whole destruction, the elect, they gonna um, enslave the heathens. So slavery of the heathen nations is a part of prophecy, future prophecy, biblical future prophecy, man. The uh, uh um, the heathen nations going in slavery under the under the real Israelites is a part of prophecy it says it right here and they shall spoil those that spoiled them and rob those that robbed them so all these dudes like vocab malone and people don't think that uh he that gonna be a slave in the kingdom you, you crazy man you don't understand prophecy and guess what it says say it the lord yahweh bahashim yahweh shah so the lord said it so you know it's gonna happen okay verse 11 and it shall come to pass in that day that i will give unto gog a place there of graves in israel the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea. So after that whole destruction, because it's going to be dead bodies and everything out there, right? After that whole destruction, right? So, <clears throat> Russia and its allies, right? They're going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of dead bodies, okay? It says, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, right? It says, and there, shall, and there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude. So the Lord is going to have a place or a, a graveyard, Okay? You know, and, and um, you know, in Israel, right? And um, it's gonna in pretty much the slaves of the elect, which are gonna be the heathens. Hey, and guess what? The, the international bankers, they're gonna uh bury, they they they're gonna bury all those dead bodies. It's gonna be a lot of dead bodies, man. Cause it's, cause it's gonna tell you how there's gonna be a, a feast for the birds like never before, man. Okay. 
It says, Near shall they bury Gog, the Russians, the Russia, Russia, you know, the military and all his multitude. And they shall call it the Valley of Haman Gog. And Haman Gog in the Hebrew is Haman 1, which means multitude. And Gog is, you know, talking about Russia. So the multitude of Gog. All right. <laughs> the Valley of the Multitude of Gog, man. <laughs> is they going to, you know, those, those uh, soldiers, they're going to be dead after all that. Right. So lock it. Verse 12. In seven months, meaning a complete amount of time, shall the house of Israel be burying them that they may cleanse the land. But we're not the ones that's actually going to bury. See, we're going to have heathen slaves to bury it, to bury um these uh these uh, dead bodies, you see. Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them a renown. The day that I shall be glorified. The day that I shall be glorified, say the Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, right? And they shall sever out, which means divide, divide out men of continual employment. See? You know? <clears throat> so we're gonna um so the elect are gonna divide out men of continual employment, meaning they always gonna have work to do. And what are these men gonna do? They're gonna pass it says passing through the land to bury with the passengers, those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search it. Shall they search? All right. So it's saying um it's pretty much you're gonna have men, right? That's gonna go. Okay. But the after the you know the initial burying takes place, you're gonna have men that's gonna go, um you're gonna have men that's gonna go, you know, searching for any uh any bones and things like that, right? Verse fifteen it says in the and this is gonna have after the initial um See, after the end of seven months, so they search. You see? So after the initial burying. Verse 15, it says, And the passengers that pass through the land, when any see it, the mo a man's bones, a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by it. All right? So when they go searching and they see a bone, they're going to put a sign by it. It says, Till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. So they're going to see the bone. All right? Going to put a sign by it to indicate that, you know, um, Bodies in that area need to be buried. All right. Verse 16. And also the name of the city shall be Hamunah. Thus shall they cleanse the land. All right. I forget what Hamunah means. I got to look up in the Blitter Bible again. I don't got, you see, no service. <laughs> now, anyways, verse 17. And thou son of man, thus said the Lord Yahweh, speak unto every feather fowl. So see, now it's about to get into up here, right? Verse 4. Remember, it's told, the Lord's telling God, and he's going to give God to the ravenous birds of every sort, right? Ezekiel 39. And this, once again, will show you, this gives you an idea how many, you know, like that. pretty much there's going to be a lot of bodies out there. Ezekiel 39 and 17. And, and thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, speak unto every feather fowl and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come. Gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you. Even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full and drink and it's like and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, say the Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. So you see, um, these are, uh, you know, they, they pretty much they, um, you know, they, <laughs> all those dead bodies that's going to be out there after the war is over, all right, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the birds and everything They're going to be eating them They're going to be eating those bodies man Okay They're going to they're gonna, you know, be eating everything Okay You see But <clears throat> You know And yeah after the war is over And after the war is over Ain't going to be no next world war man Alright Israelites are going to be in power You can't take down a people that's immortal That has spiritual power That's 100% right You can't take that down man Okay, that's not going to happen. All right, you know, like I said, we're going to have the upper hand. 
well, let's better break it down. Pretty much explain how we're gonna have that we're gonna have the upper hand, man. After this war and everything is over, you see. So that just shows you the Israelites are next up in power. If we taking all the if all because it said spoil those that spoiled them and rob those that robbed them, all right. And that's all the heathen, because the heathen nations have done that to us. All right. Now, if us Israelites we're gonna take all of them in power, all of them in slaves, who does that tell you is in power up next? The Israelites. You see. But after this war, okay, a lot of it's gonna. Hey man, the, the birds are gonna feast. All right. But Ezekiel 39 and 21, and I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed in my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I'm Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah their power from that day and forward. Yeah, you know. And then like Apostle Ronald Love was saying, Apostle Ronald, he said something along the lines of um ain't gonna be uh no more Christianity. You know, that's that's gonna be a thing that's gonna be a thing of the past, you know. It's going to be known that Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah is the one that did this. He's the God of Israel. All right. People are going to fear him. Verse 23. Now check this out. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they transgressed it, because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them unto the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. You see? So the heathen nations, so called white men, so called Japanese, so called Chinese, so-called Arabs, East Indians, Japheth, you know, the Japhites, the Hamites, all right? They going to know why we went into slavery. And then when it wasn't because we weak, okay? <laughs> you used to like the thing, it wasn't because we weak, man. It's the only reason we went into slavery is because we went against our power, okay? You know? We, we, we sinned against our power, man. Like it tells you in Judith. All right, how, um, you know, if we fall, you know, pretty much we sin against our power, you know, then uh, we're vulnerable. All right, but verse 24, according to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shai. Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and, and, be, and we'll be jealous for my holy name. So, so now the Lord's going to end our captivity, you know, he's going to deliver us. You see, all right. Bring again doesn't mean um, bring another captivity. You know, it says to have mercy, so it doesn't. So how would that mean the same thing? You know, how would that mean the Lord gonna bring another captivity? All right, but verse twenty six. After that, they have borne their shame and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land and none made them afraid. So. Yes, yeah, so after we born the shame of sinning against the Lord, all right, and trespassing and uh and um trespassing against the Lord, all right, you know, when we had it good in our own land, right? You know, the Lord gonna have mercy after you know after all that's happened, the Lord gonna have mercy on us. Verse twenty seven, when I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations. Because the Lord scattered us in, but the Lord going to gather us. And how is the gathering going to take place? When your house shot comes back. The Lord, cause, and, but it ain't going to be the whole whole uh, Israel this time. Matthew 24, starting at verse 30 through 31. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man, Yahweh Shai, coming in the clouds of heaven. So-called UFOs, which are the chairs of the Lord, with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. See? From one end of heaven to the other. That's from all over the world, man. See? Um, so, yeah, back here. It's Gil 39 and 28. Then shall they know that I am Yahweh their power, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land, and have left none of them any more there. And it's going to start with the elect. Okay? Because when you just read, your house shall going to come back and gather his elect. And the elect is the chosen out of the nation of Israel. You see? The Lord going to bring us back to our own land. Verse 29. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, said the Lord, your house shall All right? So, you know, it's Ezekiel 39. It's, you know, um, a couple verses. It's 29 verses, all right? But, yeah, you know, so. Just wanted to uh, bring that. Bring that out. All right. So, hey, 
Lord, when this lesson is edifying, I want to give all the praises, honor, and glory to whom it rightfully belongs, which is Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rekakodash, that will honor us to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, every well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. Shall the warm to the elect.